up together, never thought you'd be next to me. At your mother's house, when I stole a kiss from your lips. Young and free, we were high on a wild dream, honey in our blood. Felt the rush of your touch, let the feelings grow. Then we fell in love. It's you, it's you. It's always been you. It's you. It's you. It's always been you. Hey guys, before we get started with today's video, I do want to let you know that the second channel, my second channel, Time Out, just now uploaded its new video and it was wild. If you want to check it out, click up above right now and go check it out. And also, don't forget to go to www.itsjustasix.com. Every $10 that you spend is going to get you automatically entered in to win this car. And tonight only, we've got 10% off everything for Valentine's Day. Sounds good. <laughs> I like it. Now, back to today's video. Why do I keep calling it a U joint? It's a U bolt. Oh my god, it's so hot! It actually is. Oh, huh? Huh? What? Work truck No, not work truck. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be lifting up the rear of my 2020 Duramax. As you guys know, we did a level kit on the truck a few videos ago and it lifted it up, but the only downfall is that whenever we did level the truck, I thought it was going to level it to the rear, whenever in reality it actually lifted it two inches higher than the rear is. It rides amazing, but I do want to get the rear lifted up to where it matches the front, so we got this in. These are called lift blocks. Basically what these do is they are spacers between the leaf springs and your rear axle in the truck. You've got extended u-bolts to be able to attach these and i'm going to show you guys exactly how all of that works here in just a second they are lift blocks yes but essentially what they are is spacers between the leaf spring there and the rear axle which in a second i'm going to go another and show you guys but we're going to take off the u-bolts off of the axle lift the bed of the truck up to lift the leaf springs off of the axle slide our spacer in there lower it down put our extended U-bolts, tighten up the nuts, and send it on its way. After that, we're gonna take this truck to hopefully get aligned today because I have not gotten it aligned since we put on the front lift uh, level, whatever you wanna call it, from the GUIs. And like I said, guys, if you missed that video, click up above right now, go check it out. It's really cool. Truck looks amazing with the new wheels and tires. Like I said, my only complaint was that it was a little bit uneven front to rear. It looks like we're doing like a Cali lean right now, so. Oh, I like it. I like it. Yeah, I know. It actually, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't. It's just, yeah. It's just not my personal preference. But anyways, we're going to hopefully finish that up, go get this thing aligned. And then after that, what we're going to do is pretty cool. I've got a few more boxes in today, right here, as you guys can see. These are the shocks for the new 2020. But unfortunately, they only sent me one whenever I ordered two. And they were supposed to send two, but I only got one. I don't know why. But we're probably going to run the stock shocks until I can figure out where the second one is. Once I get that, then we'll install both of these Bilstein shocks, which I'm really looking forward to. And these two boxes right here, I've got two turbo shields for those of you that don't know i do have a twin turbo gt350 which uh is just now back up and running with its new built engine which is pretty cool we're about done with break-in now i've been driving it a lot and the only thing really that we're worried about is that right around the turbo housing itself the exhaust housing there is some coolant lines there's vacuum lines all that good stuff so especially being in the trans tunnel where heat isn't really easy to dissipate i'm gonna wrap turbos with these turbo blankets that way hopefully we can keep the heat down keep everything safe and from burning up down there so probably do that and change the oil on the GT350 once we get back from aligning this truck later. Reason being is because I am halfway done with my break-in, so I gotta change the oil one more time, run it 500 more miles, and that engine is completely broken in and ready to full send and make upwards of 1,500 wheel horsepower. So that's gonna be really cool. Turn notifications on if you guys are excited for it. Trust me, it's gonna be sick. Anyways though, until later, let's go ahead and get focused on this Duramax and get this thing finished up. Oh, I get to use my fancy dancy doohickey light. Dang, it's actually really nice though. Holy cow, what size are those U-bolts? Large. 
large. I think this is gonna be the first time I've used these giant sockets. For those of you guys that do not know and may be new to the channel, SK Tools is my tool sponsor. Also happens to be the best tools on the planet. It is a 26, no 27, sorry, 27. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take off. <laughs> we're gonna take off the two bolts on the front. We're gonna take off the two nuts on the front and then also the two nuts on the rear and get this U-bolts up. All right, so I've got the two U-bolts off on this side. Doug's got the two U-bolts off on that side. Now our axle is completely free of our leaf spring. We can go to the front and jack up the back of the truck right here. And what's gonna happen is, is it's not gonna lift the axle because there's nothing else holding it to the truck. Instead, it's just gonna lift the body and lift the leaf spring up. At that point, we'll be able to slip our blocks in there and get them aligned up real nice. Slip our new U-joints over the entire leaf spring and bolt it back together, real nice and simple. All right, our leaf spring, I see back there is separated. Oh, oh, the axle's twisting. Oh, it's the shocks. Do we need to take those off? Nah, I think we can probably do it okay. Make it work. I think we're gonna have to put the U-bolts on that side first. There we go. Mm -mm. I think we're gonna have to get some help though for somebody to hold this side. Y'all trying, one of y'all trying to help? You trying to help real quick? Give it a little shove. Oh, there it goes. There it is. Yeah. All right. All right Hang this. on, Rob. Get these U-joints. U-bolts. Give you a pull. You gotta pull it again, Rob. Cool. So as you guys see, we got the lift block put in between the leaf springs and the axle down here. We got our U-joint. Why do I keep calling these damn U-joints? <laughs> I got the U-bolts put in. We got the nuts tightened down on the bottom. So now that we've got that side at least in place, we can come over here to this side. Rob was over here holding it for us. So now what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna do the exact same thing on this side now that Rob held it for us to get the line on the other side. I was decided to argue with his life narrator. What he didn't know is that he was actually going to have a sex change operation in three weeks. <laughs> Who, the narrator? Oh, poor dog. The narrator was? His name shall now be Dougina. Maybe from the rear with our bracket. See, normally, guys, at this point, we would be swapping out the stock shocks for our aftermarket Bilstein shocks, except for, like I said, I only got one in the mail for some reason. Probably I'll get on the phone here in a minute, like normal. I don't know what is going on, but we have literally not had an order of in like a year. Now what Doug is doing is lifting up the rear diff. That way we can get the wheels back on and take it off of the jack stands. But if you look in here, we've now got our lift block spacing between our rear axle right here and the leaf spring. So we've officially lifted the rear end another two inches, which is really nice. Flip up this meaty boy. Boy, this thing's retarded thick. She dumb me through. Well, this thing's like 30% as thick as that. Oh yeah, you went way too high. Holy sh That's about to suck to lift that high. He's okay. You wanna lower it down a little you bit? You have me. No? Actually, you've got Doug, holy shit. All right, Doug. Yeah, yeet. What we're gonna do now is tighten up the wheels back onto the truck, lower it down once we torque up the wheels. Then we're gonna go under and make sure that all of our hardware for the new U-jolt. Oh my gosh, U-joints. Why? U-jolt. Why do I keep calling it a U-joint? It's a U-bolt. Anyways, we're gonna go under there and check all the hardware on a new U-bolts just to make sure that everything is torqued down properly before we get on a 40 minute drive to the alignment shop. That would be fun if they weren't tight, right? Dang, dude, it actually is pretty. It actually work is. Status Hold, huh? Huh? What? Work truck status. No, not work truck. Wow, this is actually pretty large. Next up, I'm gonna grab a tape measure and we're going to measure the fender gap on all four wheels. Awesome. We've got 10 and a quarter. We've got 10 and a quarter. Woo! I was right. Two inches was perfect. Right. 10 and a quarter. Perfect, we got the truck sitting perfectly level. Beautiful. Now that we got this wrapped up, I guess we're gonna go ahead and head on a 30 minute drive real quick, or 40, it's 30 or 40, something like that. And we're gonna go get this thing aligned. Let's head to the alignment shop. We got a lot of stuff to do, so we're in a little bit of a hurry because I do want to finish up the Shelby before this weekend. You guys will see why. Nice, I don't even have the key. <laughs> That is pretty big. Go stand up next to it real quick. Go stand by the door. Nick is six foot three. Look at how huge. Well guys, it definitely uh, it definitely looks exactly like I was hoping for. That's pretty sick. Now at this point, like I said, we're gonna go get this thing aligned real quick. Hopefully once we get it aligned, we've, it will pretty much be done with the truck. At that point, I don't really have anything crazy that I want to do to the truck after this. I, this is pretty much where I wanted it to stay. Um, the only thing really left that I wanna do is these little side markers. They make aftermarket ones that are different designs and stuff, and they actually make some that are all blacked out and they make some that are clear and they look a lot better. The clear ones actually, they look similar to like the turn signal piece right here on the mirror. And I think that would look a lot better than the orange. The orange just is, it's really too much pop for me. But anyways though, let's go ahead and go get this thing aligned. 
It sounds actually, it wasn't bad. Positive 1.2 when it came in. It was on the edge, it actually said 1.3. I mean, so that's still- wasn't that bad, toe is just bad. Toe's bad, that's that, That's too much camber right there. Yeah, definitely. Passive size that, isn't bad though. No, nah, caster camber's good on that. So huh. I'm just, I'm trying to get the camber dropped right here. And you got a ton of room, I'm liking this kit so far. You like the kit? It rides good too, huh? Yeah, it does. I'm happy to hear that you like that kit, though. I was, I had no idea what kit to go with because it's such a new truck. And you know how my last truck, you remember that you did? Rides terrible because you remember we had to get the keys jacked up so much? These, mm -hmm. this one's not like that at all. The last truck, I could barely even fit 33s on it. This one, you can fit 35s. They're totally different. That's what everybody's excited about. They can run the bigger tires and fit them and not have to cut it. We had to, y'all about to say, we had to trim up. Well, no, I, I, I saw it down Yeah, there. we had to trim, but it, it clears. All right, we're going to go see. Dang, this man works so fast. He's going to test drive it real quick. Just to make sure everything's seated properly. And the alignment's all good, steering wheel straight. And after that, I guess we're gonna head back. I got the box for my new light over here. I gotta throw away, but let me show you guys what we got. So as you know, we are still doing break-in. We're not running great oil in here. On purpose, we're running conventional oil. This does not have all the detergents and other BS that full synthetic does. And this will basically break in your engine really, really nice. So for this, we're using Valvoline 1540 heavy duty engine oil, blah, 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 whatever. Normal conventional oil. Got our new oil filter. Got some engine additive for break-in. Also, inside of these two boxes, this is what I was excited to show you guys earlier. So in here, hey, let me put it up here. So that way we got a light. So I have actually never installed one of these before, but Doug has, so he's gonna be showing me how to do this today. But basically what we got, as you guys know, we've got a twin turbo setup on the GT350. So we've got two turbo blankets right here. If you look at how a turbo works, the, actually, hang on. <laughs> uh, you're gonna show them? Oh, no, I, I wouldn't show it. Okay. All right, I won't, I won't show it. We have a surprise over there that I really just can't show you guys. But anyways, basically there is two turbine sides. One of them is the induction turbine. One of them is basically the exhaust turbine, um, intake and exhaust. So basically the exhaust turbine, the exhaust comes out, it turns the turbine wheel. So obviously the exhaust is really hot. So that side of the turbo is also extremely hot. Unfortunately on turbos, you've got to have coolant lines. Typically you've got oil lines, but we have oilless turbos, but we've got coolant and vacuum lines still that we need to protect. All of them are rubber. Obviously rubber under really high heat is not that great. So we've got these titanium turbo covers that should cut down on all the heat and hopefully keep everything safe down there. You don't want to burn anything up. Yeah, and you buy these based off the turbo frame housing you have. So like a hybrid right. T3, T4 normally fit the same. Then you'd have a T6 frame, which is like- Big boy status. Yeah, like what a- Big boy single. I mean, I wouldn't know anything about that, but- mm -mm, anyways, Definitely so. wouldn't know anything about T6 turbos. Not a single setup. We're gonna take these and this is gonna go over your turbine housing and then basically you take your lock wire do a double wrap here go around double wrap here go here double wrap here and then back once again normally so we shouldn't need the, the clamp since mm -hmm. we're not nope we won't need that this we do need to keep this wire. though because we can definitely use that in the future on oh, other yeah. cars we have put now right at about five or six hundred miles on the engine which break-in is recommended on this particular engine from rpg i believe it's like a thousand miles so we're about halfway there we're doing our second scheduled oil change during break-in just to kind of get all of that contamination and crap out of the engine after today i believe we should be pretty much good to go uh, for at least another 500 miles doing break-in and stuff like that so that's what we're going to be wrapping today if you notice though there is coolant line right here right here there's vacuum line that's real close right there unfortunately though because of how compact the space is in here we can't really route the lines anywhere else so figure turbo blankets wouldn't be the worst idea especially because it's going to prevent heat soak on every other component under here i don't want to have too much heat going anywhere so this is the part that I was halfway dreading because I don't know what it's going to look like. Oil looks good though. Yeah, it's a little dark, but that's actually to be expected. It's probably a little uh, fuel soaked right now. Hey, look, 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 look. Lower the, uh, lower the arm or the thing down. Just a little bit. Got a little bit of pixie dust in there. It's actually relatively good looking. Yeah, that's not bad at all. So during break-in, guys, it is typically expected to see a lot, not a lot, but you'll see you'll see a good bit of metal shavings and dust and things like that in the oil. And basically what that is, is all of the pieces of metal that are inside of the engine that are having really tight tolerance. They're all getting broken in and basically all seating together and all the excess metal that comes off during that process is what you're seeing in the oil. For those of you wondering, this is DEI, Design Engineering. Um, I've never used them, but Doug's recommended them to me. So yeah, I'll take this and I'll do a few wraps around here. So you can kind of see the form that it's starting to take around the turbine. Yeah, and pretty much what you want to do is kind of Get it to where it's snug on there and just do a couple little wraps to hold it. So as you guys can see, basically the hot portion of the turbine, the hot side, yep. 
it's completely covered now in a titanium sleeve, yep. which protects everything around it from heat. And with it holding the heat inside, it keeps all the heat soaked pretty much to the portion that's already going to be hot anyways. And it doesn't allow for as much hot air to get sucked into the engine, which is also great because you keep IATs down. And obviously, like I said, it obviously protects everything else that is not supposed to meant to be burnt around it. Looks like we might make some power now. I think we were going to make some power before, but that's actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. 30 second install by Doug and the turbo shield is on. Turbo blanket looks really, really good too. All right, I'm going to give it a shot now and see what I can do. I ain't never did this before. No. Yeah, Tuck that, that one's back be a little bit. Tight in there too. Oh, okay, we're going to tuck that out the way. Yeah, kind of tuck it through there real <sighs> nice like. Watch, you got trans line here. Yep, it's not one to tuck. <laughs> you get around the housing first. You're oh, okay. Up Probably where it's going to sit. Keep in mind, these are just frame based. So. Oh, dude, this is going to be impossible to get to Dude, that's so damn the wastegate is right in the way on this side jesus oh what the what the fudge, <laughs> what the fudge how in the hell is that supposed to happen oh my god what how the <laughs> who would put their turbos that close to the trans dude oh my god dude well after a bit of struggling i got my uh my turbo cover on it was a little bit a little bit more difficult than i was expecting <laughs> i should have done that side this side's got the entire trans lines the trans the fire i mean just like everything possible is in the way on this but we got it so that's really cool seems like they will work very effectively now to fill this thing with oil and i get to try on my new light yeah oh oh yeah oh yeah that's actually really nice. This break-in additive is very, very high in zinc content. And zinc basically like helps protect everything during break-in. That's why you squeeze the oil out, because then you get to see little bits of stuff oh, right yeah. here that you would probably miss being that oil is shiny anyway. Yeah, that's great. But I mean, you got a little bit, but it's not a whole lot to be worried about. This is completely normal. So far, so good, guys. That is great news. I mean, you can look through here and you see light flake. Oh, yeah. Little bits here and there. It's some aluminum that's been, you know, in the motor. There's a little, bunch over here. Little bits of ring. Little, probably a little bits of bearing. Looks very normal for break-in. Oh, my God. You used a funnel this time? I'm proud of you. <laughs> oh, I learned. After pouring three quarts down. All right, we got eight quarts in there, which means we got to pour half of this thing all right now that we've got oil in there we do have our drain plug and oil filter in place so we're good to go it won't start oh, no. <laughs> i'm joking i'm pushing the clutch and the gas down at the same time to prime the engine next thing we're going to do is install this gorgeous mishimoto coolant expansion tank onto this car as you guys probably know by now a long time ago on my 2016 over there uh I, we did the exact same coolant tank and i've been running it pretty much since and i've really really liked it a lot so i figured why not go ahead and do the same thing on this car plus the stock coolant tank on these cars is honestly hideous so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that that one will start gravity bleeding too believe it or not pick that up and then maneuver this hose around ever so carefully we're gonna take this and we're gonna- Oh shit, it's draining. Yep, I knew it. That's, That's what I was saying. It gravity bleeds out of here. Ouch! She just peeled my skin off my thumb. There we go. All right guys, now that we got the stock overflow tank out of the way, the install for this one is super simple. And by the way guys, if you wanna to go to Mishimoto.com and go check out anything on their site, you can go pick out your favorite cooling devices like uh, coolant expansion tanks or radiators or intercoolers or oil coolers or yeah you get the point they got a lot of stuff anyways go check out their site use code it's just a six at checkout to save a bunch of money on your order but let me get back to this install because it's actually not that bad we're almost there i like how they have serial numbers on every one of their things it's really cool as you guys know too we have the mishimoto radiator in here now too that's really nice install is soap a sample put that on there <clears throat> slide it down in place you put the tab in there mm -hmm. Now we can take the cap off, fill it up with coolant, start it up, and we're good to go. Ooh, uh. Cool thing about this expansion tank also is that even though it is completely black on the side right here, you've got this little tube, which is very handy for being able to see your coolant level so you don't have to take the cap off, which is pretty nice. Oh, 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 oh she's, oh. A, she's a spilling. All right, guys, we are pretty much good to go now. I'm going to go ahead and give the engine a start. Let it get up to temp idle. It's probably going to be smoke because we just now put the new turbo blankets on. <laughs> Perfect. That's why you prime it. All right, so I let the car sit running for just a minute. Go ahead and check the oil level now, just to be 100% that we got all 10 quarts been there. We ain't running low, because I don't want to run this damn brand new engine low. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Right to the top. Sweet. All what, right. What, what happened to the light? Just Can't find the hole in the dark? 
Louis's <laughs> face. <laughs> hey, it actually looks a lot better in here. Surprisingly, just one one little change made a pretty decent difference. All right, well, I guess we're good with this. Okay, let's go rip the chitties. Go. <laughs> Well guys, we got the GT350 back together with the new turbo blankets, new coolant expansion tank. It is a little bit dirty, but I feel like today was a pretty successful day. We actually managed to get the truck lifted in the rear. We got everything level front and rear. We got the entire thing aligned finally, so this truck is finally good to drive again. I've been honestly going like the last probably week and a half since we got the wheels on the truck the first time and we never have been able to drive it again since then really because uh, I've been waiting on the level and once we did the level I was waiting on the rear component so that way we could level the entire truck and lift the rear also before I could go to get aligned and I didn't want to drive on it too too much without it being aligned obviously because they're super expensive tires on the truck and I didn't want to beat them up so anyways though we're gonna go put some miles on this car here in just a minute it is dark so unfortunately this is gonna be the wrap for today's video but this thing is going to be an animal we are so close to having it finished being broken in just a few more miles five 500 more miles make sure you guys turn notifications on i hate to be the one that ruins surprises but i will say in the next week or so we've got a lot a lot of huge surprises especially containing the uh the gt which you guys are really excited about i'm sure we've got some pretty crazy stuff coming up with this car so trust me you're gonna want to be here for it and also with this car so all right guys thank you so much for watching that's gonna be a wrap for today's video if you enjoyed this video smash that like button go ahead and hit subscribe turn notifications on and i will see you guys next video oh by the way before we go make sure you click up above right now i just started my second channel so if you guys are interested in checking that out now click up Go check it out. Hit subscribe to my second channel. And uh, yeah, see you guys later.